name is Ginger and I am the creator of a social enterprise and that takes a lot for me to say you're meeting me in the middle of my journey just as I'm meeting you in the middle of your journey. So I'm going to take you during my talk on a bit of a time travel from where I was three years ago, pretty much exactly three years ago, and then tell you where I am right now and then take a moment for the majority of my time with you and talk about some of the things that happened along the way, some of the lessons that I have learned so far that perhaps you can learn as you build out in your life um, around something that you feel is important to you. So three years ago would be the spring of 2015. So you're seeing pictures from that time frame. To give you a little bit about what was happening or what I was going through at that time in my life, I had built my life up around a teaching career. Um, I was teaching grade five and six at a school in the Annapolis Valley Regional School Board. I tried to find photos of me teaching math and language arts and other important curriculum. All I could find was a camping trip. <laughs> so this is me on a camping trip with some of my grade six students. And this is a collage of um, our school that we did as a class one year. So my life was as a teacher, an elementary school teacher. I was a mom, I was a wife, and living quite a happy life uh, with that existence. And I would spend a lot of time talking to my students and debriefing with them around different things that were going on in, in their life, out on the playground, and so on. And apparently I used to say to my students a lot, be the change you wish to see in the world. And one of my students three years ago gave me what you see there um, right around that same time where my life took a drastic change. And it took me a while, actually it was about a year ago, so I'd owned the change purse and it's been a memento and a symbol of what I'm going to share with you. And I didn't even clue in that, okay, it's a change purse saying, be the change you wish to be in the world. That taught me a while. You probably got it just like that. So I, I all of a sudden got the, oh yeah, that's kind of funny. So, so yes, be the change you wish to see in the world. Um, three years ago, I painted dots with my students for the first time. Uh, first time for me painting dots with them as a project. And what happened is my, my life completely went from the direction that I just described to you to over here. This is where you're going, Ginger. And I, it was like a fire ignited in me. And I developed what I'm going to share with you now. And that particular basket of rocks was part of the beginning that I'll say in a, in a few minutes. Let me share with you what where we are now. So we're going to flash forward. We're skipping from the journey. The journey started three years ago. You're meeting me here, three years into it. So a traveling kindness rock, the name I have trademarked it, and it means a small dot mandala stone, just like two I have here with me, that is mailed out to an individual who is going through something challenging in their life. It is completely free. It is a symbol of everybody around the world who connects with what we're doing as a gesture of support. It's not from any one individual, it's from us all. So anybody can ask for a traveling kindness rock for their loved one. To do that, you're all welcome to. You would go on to our website, you fill in the form that's there with the person's mailing address, the colors you want on their rock, a personal message, and when you hit send, I have a team of people that goes into action. What will happen is we will put that request on a list and one of the volunteers on our team that stretches from Nova Scotia to British Columbia will paint a rock voluntarily and then we will mail it out free of charge to you and your loved one who will receive it. So they are symbolic. Anything that's purchased or anything that um, gets bought by our, through our website or in person comes with a card that explains the symbolism. All of the rocks start out completely black. They're all painted a base of black. That represents the difficult time in the person's life. So there are people receiving them that are going through mental health challenges. They might be grieving, um, battling an illness, anything that you can think of that would be that dark time. 
the first dot to be painted is the center dot. It is always white. It represents hope, and it represents whatever someone's spiritual beliefs would be. All the other dots align with that center dot. And those colorful dots represents the thousands of people around the world who connect together through what we're doing to send the rocks on their journeys. So they are a symbol, symbol of humanity saying, you've got this and we support you. And they show up completely free of charge. So where I'm also at at three years in is I've developed a system that allows people everywhere to create the same dot mandala. So if you see here, this is an example of one pattern and this is another. And so as I began to explore things that I'll share in a moment of how, what I've been going through, this system evolved out of me following my intuition. And it allows people, I'm not an artist, I have no artistic training, it allows me to teach people how to replicate the same dot bandala. And at first this was purely out of exploration and figuring out how am I going to make money off of what I'm doing. So what this has done though is allowed me to once again follow the theme of what's meant to come through me, which is taking dot mandalas, letting them represent people connecting together, doing positive stuff. So, people anywhere can replicate the same dot mandala. These are pictures of students from different countries around the world who have painted a mandala that I created that represented Canada. I've developed a program that is called the Pattern Club, where the patterns represent a charity. People around the world paint that same mandala, and we donate part of their uh, registration fees to be in that program to the charities. This particular pattern is being held by boys in Rwanda. A member in England traveled to Rwanda, took the picture of this particular design, which represents the Red Cross here in Canada, which at that time back in October was working to uh, support people in uh, the Haiti area, which had gone through a hurricane recently. And there are boys in Rwanda holding a mandala that symbolizes people around the world supporting that. I do something super fun. I use my YouTube channel to broadcast live. People around the world join me, and we dot the same mandala at the same time with our best friends from multiple countries. These are people from, there was in that particular one, there were people in 10 different countries, and the theme was a wish for 2018. What did we wish for our world in 2018? And I knew this would happen as my intuitions guided me. Sometimes our world experiences a tragedy that touches us all, like the Humboldt Broncos incident that happened about a month ago. We were asked to respond. I created a pattern using the system. The pattern instructions were available digitally for sale on our website. People from multiple countries paid $5 each to purchase the instructions, dotted it, posted pictures on social media so we could see we are interconnected. And we donated 100% of those profits to the families and the survivors. So if I may, we just went from where I started three years ago as a teacher, had never painted a dot, to here's Ginger in front of you bravely at this moment saying, I am a creator of a social enterprise three years into it. I'm going to use the dot mandala or mandala. I was recently corrected on my YouTube channel for my pronunciation of mandala. So, uh, <laughs> yes. So that spoke true to me when someone said earlier about, oh, we worry about this and this and this when we're speaking. I'm like, am I gonna say mandala or am I gonna say mandala? I'll say both and let people pick what they want. So I'm going to use this as a symbol of my journey and me following what I believe to know is my life's purpose. And I'm hopeful that by you hearing about my journey of these three years that we're going to go through briefly, 
that you will hear something in it that may inspire you depending on where you are in your journey. So we're going to back up the bus to where it all started three years ago. Three years ago, before I ever painted a dot, April 2015, I was in a space where I went as a teacher to go to an in-service, and it was a wellness-themed in-service. I love that that's um, popping up as a theme for people to be um, in-serviced on or through their workplace to connect to. So I went to a session where people were talking about energy healing. This center dot represents, in my journey, the getting connected to a force. And I'll let you fill in in your experience, in your life, for what that word means to you. It might mean nature, it might mean God, it might mean a particular physical activity like yoga or running, but the force. So at that end service, there were different people coming around and doing different things, and an energy healer came over to me, and she um, took a sounding bowl and used that sounding bowl to, to connect to my energy, which I'd never had happen before. And she said... Ginger, she had learned my name, you are a healer. I was like, what's that? <laughs> what's a healer? And that began a multiple year, I mean, three years into exploring what that means. But it intrigued me and it resonated with me in that April of 2015, one month before I painted my first dot, she told me that. So I signed up for a Reiki course. And things started shifting and changing in my life pretty quickly. I'm now a Reiki master. I do not practice because I believe what I'm sharing with you is my healing for the world. Um, I was also trained in different, another modality called Theta Healing. And Theta Healing is something that you can explore around how to get rid of blocks that we have up in our lives. So for instance, if I had a block, that, which I did at first, that there shouldn't be any money connected to what I'm sharing with you. That was a huge um, mental con construct that I had in my mind. I am giving, and I've had people giving, there shouldn't be any money attached to that. So once I cleared and began, began to have a better understanding of what money is, which is a physical representation of our energy, and let me know as I cleared that, hey, if somebody wants to support what I'm sharing with you today, then their money is a physical representation of their energy and they can energetically be part of what's going on. So once I cleared that stuff and I aligned with what for me I needed to align with, I was ready to move forward. And so I did. I started in May of 2015 with my first dots with my students. And then within those first two or three months as all these shifts and changes were going on, the idea of using what was coming through me to do something positive came to me. So the first thing I did is those baskets, that basket that you saw at the beginning, that sat on my desk and the rocks didn't travel at all. They were to inspire the students sitting right in front of me every day to be kind to each other. So I started that way. Very quickly, though, it'll, it began to grow in my mind. Well, what if the rocks travel? So the next thing I can share with you that you may want to consider is that if you have some kind of an idea, something that you want to try, you may want to hold off sharing it until it grows just a little tiny bit. Because what happened is I shared that concept is the people near me and closest to me said, that's not going to work. And I said to myself, but I know I was meant to do this, so I did it anyhow. And I explained it over and over and over and over again. And the people that were first helping me with it, because it started as a chain of giving, they said, well, what do you mean the rocks are going to somebody you don't even know? I said, yeah. Well, they said, well, am I supposed to know the person? I said, no. Well, why are we sending it to them? <laughs> because the human experience is similar. That's why we're sending it to them. So I continued on this path, 
And I just have to think where I was in the journey. Oh, yes, the people will appear, and the instances will appear, and the resources will appear for what you need on your path. So just a couple quick stories. One of the first people that told me this will not work was my life partner, Steve. I decided in this first year of all this unfolding, as I went to school every day and I was teaching my classes, um, and this was evolving, and it was simply a giving aspect to it. There's no finances involved. I decided I needed to take a leave of absence. It felt like I was standing in a river, and the river was f go keeping on going and going and going, and I was standing completely still. I needed to take a leave of absence from a teaching position so that that river could flow. So I did. And then when my paycheck stopped from the Annapolis Valley Regional School Board, within one month, my husband got laid off. And then, two weeks later, a person who has over 30,000 followers on YouTube for making dot mandalas bought one of our first six sets of tools, uses them in her videos, and my husband now makes tools full time for Traveling Kindness Rocks. <laughs> and so it grows. Now let me think about what other stories I need to share. Trust. So there I am in my leave of absence, and I had no clue how I was going to make money. None when I first started. I hadn't developed the pattern system that I shared with you. Um, I started to explore teaching. Okay, I can teach, I can do that. I'm not a business person, but I can teach, I can do that. So I started going into schools and I started teaching people in community events. And then what happened? Do you know your Nova Scotia political history? Nova Scotia teachers went on strike. And no outside external people, who at the time was me, was allowed to come in and present to students. And there I was in the dead of winter when no one wants to buy anything and no one wants to come events to events and I couldn't do the thing that was sustaining us. And so as this grows out, what you have to do and what I have to do is align with the center. That's when I align with the center. So for me, that meant I was reading my books that said the good stuff that kept my thoughts positive. I would meditate. I would visualize what I knew to be true that just hadn't happened yet. And it kept growing. So I want to bring you to where we are today, which is about here. This is where things are symbolically for me today. But just as you're sitting here and your mandala is continuing to grow and mine is continuing to grow, I know there's much more for both of us, for all of us. So I'd like to share in conclusion where I see things going. I was sitting in the Halifax airport yesterday uh, waiting to come here and I was wearing my Traveling Kindness Rocks hoodie and a gentleman came over to me. He said, I love your hoodie. I'm like, Great, he loved my hoodie. But I knew he had no idea what the concept is. But in that moment, it was like, oh my gosh, here I am, three years of developing this, and all of a sudden, three years into it, the thought of how powerful it is came to me after all I've already done. I'm like, imagine what it is I'm actually gunning for. I'm gunning for a day where people see me, or you, or someone else sitting there with some TKR swag, some Traveling Kindness Rock item, and they come over, and they are a recipient of this because thousands of them have gone out by thousands of people around the world who have painted them, supported by millions of people around the world. And you walk through the airport and you see someone wearing a Traveling Kindness Rocks hoodie and you are on your dark times path and you know that random stranger supported you on it. That's part of what I've done it for. Then remember the dot Mandela system I told you about that allows people, I teach that from grade five or primary, 
five-year-olds up to seniors. And I know that part of my journey now is taking the leap of faith for me to move from the teacher of everybody to the teacher of teachers. That's taking a lot of faith. It's taken a lot of faith at many steps along the way to teach this and to allow it to, to be experienced by other people and to trust that the money will come and that the people will come and the experiences will come. But picture a day where millions around the world can dot the same design that represents multiple people all over the world taking a stand for something. And we'll put it up on social media and you'll see the person in Australia and the person in Japan and the person in Brazil and the person in Canada and your neighbor and you all creating the same design that says we believe in peace. We believe in supporting each other. That's what I'm gunning for. Yes. Yes. Right now, the, the daughters of the rocks come from Nova Scotia and, and British Columbia. My vision is for there to be centers for them to flow out from multiple places around the world. And that when I say, you know what, we're going to get together on social media, my leader in Newfoundland and my leader in Ottawa and my leader in Japan and my leader in Brazil will say, we're getting the people together in this space and we'll connect. The two rocks I have with me will be on display. This one is going to um, a young person in New Brunswick. We partner with Children's Wish Foundation. All young people in the Atlantic provinces now, I'm proud to say, we just grew from Nova Scotia to all Atlantic provinces. When they get a wish through Children's Wish, get a Traveling Kindness Rock. They're the only ones that don't flow through our website for requests. This one will be going to... Um, North Carolina, or sorry, it's either North Carolina, it's a state down in the United States. There have been over um, 1,000 of them that have gone out, and they've been received by people in 24 countries so far. Wow. Thank you.